Why would an airplane company design a ship? They would if it was a hydrofoil. In 1962, the USS High Point launched as a demonstrator vessel for the US Navy. It was demonstrating the capabilities of hydrofoil ships. This ship was designed by the Boeing Corporation, and Boeing would go on to design a few more hydrofoil ships. Ironically, Boeing was actually a logical choice. They brought skills critical to hydrofoil design. More specifically, they understood hydrofoil control. Every hydrofoil vessel needs it, even sailing hydrofoils. Today, we discuss the problem of hydrofoil control and several solutions. A hydrofoil behaves like a fighter jet, not a boat. When a fighter jet cruises steady, it needs to control six motions, six degrees of freedom. Surge, sway, heave, roll, pitch, and yaw. When we talk about stability of motion, we need some method to control each of these six motions. If the jet gets a disturbance in any motion, we need to ensure that it reacts to stop that disturbance and return to steady flight. Some fighter jets do this with careful shaping of the wings, Others utilize advanced flight control systems. But in either method, controlling these motions requires continuous small adjustments. Ships need to control the same six motions. In a conventional displacement hull, this is pretty easy. The shape of the hull automatically controls most of those motions through hydrostatic forces. Heave is taken care of through your hydrostatic uh, immersion. Roll happens through transverse stability. Pitch is longitudinal stability and yaw comes from your lateral center of effort, plus your rudder. So just by floating in the water, four out of six of your motions are already taken care of. That only leaves surge and sway, which are partially controlled through the rudder and through propulsion adjustments. However, all bets are off with a hydrofoil. We lose the benefit of hydrostatic forces and need to invent new methods of control through careful engineering. So control methodology. How do we go about this? Well, you have three options. Active systems, passive systems, and partial hydrofoil lift. So let's get into how each one of these work. We most often see active control systems on fully submerged hydrofoil configurations. These are the most efficient configuration, but they depend on complicated computer monitoring. A computer controls flaps and ventilators to make continuous small adjustments. Design of these control computers requires detailed knowledge of the physical systems and a strong background in controls theory. They far exceed any simple task. That advanced control system is part of the reason that Boeing was a reasonable choice for designing a hydrofoil craft. Now let's talk about passive control systems, which are a lot more interesting. They work purely through controlling the shape of the hydrofoils. By picking careful shapes and selectively designing it, we can actually make the hydrofoils react in a way to passively control all six degrees of freedom. And we'll cover how each one of these six works. Let's start with the two simple ones. Uh, first off is surge motion, going forward and aft. Surge stabilizes nicely through propulsion control. Even on hydrofoil, the vessel still generates significant resistance as it runs through the water. And even up on foils, that resistance balances with forward thrust to ensure surge stability. You go forward, your resistance increases, and it balances out. Yaw stability is another easy one. That still requires a rudder. Uh, you might also have canted hydrofoils near the front that will push laterally against the hull to ensure yaw stability. Those are going to act similar to the keel on a sailing vessel. Next up is sway motion. This requires canted hydrofoils for passive stability. If you look at the figure on your screen, the canting is how you see the hydrofoils are not perfectly horizontal, they're at an angle. That's a canted hydrofoil. Imagine that the ship suddenly shifts to starboard. That sideways motion changes the angle of water flow across the hydrofoils. The starboard motion increases the angle of attack on the starboard hydrofoil, and that higher angle of attack means more lift. The opposite happens to the port hydrofoil. Add the two foils together, 
and you achieve a correction force pointed in the opposite direction of your swaying motion. A perfectly horizontal foil never reacts to these velocity changes. The canted foil was the key. Passive roll stability relies on partially submerged hydrofoils. As one side rolls down, more of that foil enters the water, increasing the surface area of that foil. More surface area increases the lift generated on that side. We get unequal lift between port and starboard foils, yielding a writing moment for roll. But you can't just ignore the canted angle of the foils. The angle of those foils also affects the roll center. The roll center equates to the meta center in a displacement ship. Just remember that the roll center has to remain above the vertical center of gravity in all vessel loading conditions. Without that critical positioning, the vessel can capsize on hydrofoil. Next let's talk about heave. To passively control heave, we need partially submerged hydrofoils again. Whenever the vessel runs on foil, part of that hydrofoil sits above the water. If that vessel heaves down, more of the hydrofoil enters the water. This increases the surface area of the foil on both sides to generate more lift. That extra lift reacts to the heave motion and pushes back up. The reverse happens if the ship heaves up. This natural balance depends on those partially submerged hydrofoils. The partially submerged hydrofoils also add to pitch stability. For pitch stability, we combine the partially submerged foils with careful selection of the longitudinal position of the foils. The figure on your screen shows typical foil configurations. The critical decision here rests with the placement of the foils relative to the center of gravity. Many vessels favor the conventional configuration, where the foils follow the same dynamics as a modern airplane. In this case, the forward foil provides the majority of the lift. Possibly up to 90% will come just from those forward foils. The aft foil may only function as pitch control. In some cases, the aft foil actually pulls downward just to maintain pitch control. Based on what I've seen of several of the videos, the latest class of America's cup boats use the conventional configuration. The relative longitudinal positions for each of these foils controls their sensitivity to pitch. It's not a matter of just picking the right spot. You also have to worry about how sensitive your boat will be afterwards. So there's critical implications on pitch stability, and a few inches can matter quite a bit. I don't know about you, but all of those requirements for passive hydrofoil stability sounds like a lot of fine tuning and careful adjustments. If you're not into all of that, there is a third option that's a little bit easier. The third option for hydrofoil stability is to design the vessel for partial support by hydrofoils. In this case, the hull never fully leaves the water. The hydrofoils carry part of the weight, with the remainder taken by the hull. This is especially popular with catamaran configurations. The system was fairly cunning, actually. If the hull never leaves the water, we still get all of the stability from the conventional displacement hulls. All of those hydrostatics kick in. If you're using a planing hull instead, the same rules apply just using planing hull physics. This allows a simple solution to get some reduction in resistance due to those hydrofoils, but you're avoiding all the complexity of ensuring hydrofoil stability. That's our shallow dive into hydrofoil stability. Hydrofoil ships have more in common with aircraft. They require detailed planning to ensure stable control of vessel motions. Options include active control, passive control, or my favorite, partial hydrofoils that rely on hydrostatics for control. And just like aircraft, these complex control systems require forethought for the risks involved and the demands of the control scheme. But when properly engineered, hydrofoils do deliver impressive speeds plus a lot of fun. Thanks very much. I'm Nick the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more videos. And did you know that we produce more than just videos at DMS? Check out our website to find more articles, free downloads, and other help with ship design. We offer a host of engineering services for budgets large and small. So check us out to see if we can make your next project easier.